In this episode, we're going to continue our safety and rescue series where we ask ourselves the questions, how can I be safer on the river? And what can I do if something is wrong? And I discovered this rescue curve watching another YouTube video made by Shoaldale Productions. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I'll put a link down in the comments below if you want to check out the video I saw. And he describes this really well. I want to describe it in my own thoughts and how I use it. And this is something that is subconsciously happening in my head when I plan a trip. And I really like this visualization for pointing it out. And just quickly, prevention always works 100% of the time. Self-rescue is a big one and it works a lot. I'm gonna say like 75% of the time, but it's gonna depend. We'll see that in a second. Your next best option is your group rescuing you. And finally, other groups on the river or search and rescue or something like that. And these, these things move up and down based on who you are. Self-rescue depends on your physical fitness, your swimming ability and your training. So. If you can swim back to your boat and get back in really quick, this is a little higher. If you're not good at swimming and you have a, a low flow PFD and you're just sort of there to be rescued, you're down here. If you cannot climb in your boat, you're sub 50. So self-rescue is to me, swimming, climbing back in your boat, reflipping your boat, proper dress, which means a good PFD for your size and clothes. Next is group rescue, the people you're going with. Are these people looking out for you? Are they able, are they physically fit enough to help rescue you? Do they have the equipment they need to do it? Can they boat really well? If they're mediocre boaters, it's hard to be a good rescuer because you're just kind of on your own sometimes. So the people around you, how good they are. And the others would mean other groups on the river. That could be another group you're into. Maybe it's a heavily trafficked river. And so if you're like on the South Fork of the American where there's you know hundreds of boats going down the river, this is higher because there's tons of people around. If you're on a rarely run river, there may not be others around. And this could mean search and rescue using your, your sad text or to call in search and rescue. So this number goes up or this, this goes up and down based on where you're boating. And if you're solo boating, your self rescue better be really good because this is really low, right? So a good example would be to me, solo boating. I'm assuming if you're solo boating, your self rescue is really high, but your group rescue is really low. And you're, if there's, hopefully there's other people around. So there's something like that. So the rescue curve may look something like this, assuming it's a heavily trafficked run. People don't solo bow very often where there's not people. Or let's say you are um, not good at self-rescue. You're not physically fit. You can't take care of yourself. You can't get back in a boat. Let's say you're down here. I think it's important for you to go boating with people who can help you. You're depending on them. You, because you cannot self-rescue, you need people around you who can do group rescue. So you want your group rescue up here and you also want others around. And so ideally you're going like that, something like that. But if you're not physically fit and not able to self-rescue and you don't have a good group around you and you're not around many people, that's not smart, right? So again, if your self rescues down here, your group is here and there's not many people around, your curve looks like that. So you want as much area under your curve as possible. You want all these things as high as you can. And again, if you can't self-rescue, having a group around you is really important. So again, this is something I think about a lot when I think about boats I'm going, or groups I'm going with. You know, if I think, if I'm not in shape, if I haven't been taking care of myself and my self-rescue is low, I kind of need good people around me to take care of me. Or if I'm gonna go do some really difficult run, you know, where self-rescue is hard, I'm gonna want that group really high. Whereas if it's well within my abilities, I'm not challenged that much. These things can be lower. So something to think about, again, I really think um, self-rescue is our best rescue as a reminder, but also having good people around you is super important. And of course, prevention is key. Not getting over your head, making good decisions whether you go, having your equipment dialed, like not having a problem at all it would be the primary thing. So that's it for this episode in our safety and rescue series. I will put the next one in the series, let's say right here. And I'm just gonna keep doing these based on thinking I have about safety and rescue. Again, it'll be right there. If you have questions, comments, concerns, anything to add, please put the comments and see you in that episode.